Hello everyone. Welcome back to Channel Knowledge Base. In today's video, we're diving into the concept of single inheritance in Java. We'll walk through an example that demonstrates how inheritance works in Java, step by step. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Let's get started. We have a Java program that illustrates single inheritance. In this example we have two classes, student and result. The result class inherits from the student class, demonstrating the fundamental principle of inheritance. The student class is our base or superclass. The result class is our derived or subclass. The main method creates objects of these classes to show how inheritance works. Let's start with the student class. This class has two attributes, PRN and name, representing a student's PRN number and name. We have two constructors in the student class. One, default constructor, initializes PRN to 1234 and name to Raj. When an object of the student class is created using this constructor, a message is printed to indicate it's the default constructor. 2. Parameterized constructor allows initializing PRN and name with custom values. It also prints a message to indicate it's the parameterized constructor. The student class also contains a display method, which outputs the PRN and name of the student. This method will be crucial when we see how the subclass interacts with the base class. Moving on to the result class, this class inherits from student. It adds three additional attributes, PHY, Chem and Math, representing the student's marks in Physics, Chemistry and Mathematics. In the result class, we have a parameterized constructor that takes in the PRN, name and marks. Here we use the super keyword to call the base class constructor to initialize the PRN and name. This ensures that we don't have to write duplicate code in the subclass. Notice how the display method in the result class overrides the display method in the student class. This is a key concept in inheritance, allowing the subclass to provide its specific implementation while still having access to the base class method using super.display. Now that we've covered the classes,
Let's move on to the main method to see the execution flow. We first create an object S1 of the student class using the default constructor. This calls the base class's default constructor and then invokes the display method to print the PRN and name. Next, we create S2, an object of the student class, but this time using the parameterized constructor. Again, the display method is called, showing how we can initialize objects with custom values. Then, we create an object S3 of the result class. Here, the base class constructor is called first, followed by the subclass constructor. The display method in result is invoked, showing both the student's details and marks. Here's something interesting. We create a student type reference S4 but assign it a result object. Even though S4 is a student reference, because it points to a result object, the overridden display method in the result class is called. Finally, we reassign S4 to a new student object using the default constructor.
This time, the display method from the student class is called. Demonstrating how the method behavior depends on the actual object instance, not just the reference type. Let's take a look at the output to understand what happens during execution. Each object creation and method call in the main method corresponds to specific lines in the output. 1. The default constructor outputs the default values of PRN and name. 2. The parameterized constructor outputs the custom values. 3. The derived class result shows how it inherits and overrides methods from student, adding its attributes. So there you have it, a comprehensive example of single inheritance in Java. We've seen how the subclass inherits properties and methods from the superclass, and how method overriding allows the subclass to provide specific implementations. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified about new videos. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video where we'll continue exploring more Java concepts. Subscribe to our channel to increase your knowledge with the knowledge base. Thank you.